Hi, I'm out in the field, um, and I wanted to show you the, the source of my watering system for the cows. So this is the what I call the hydrant, okay, coming up out of the ground there. And then I've got hose connected to it. This is food grade hose that I bought. I forget the brand. And then my son, he built this nice little shed around it, kind of just to protect it a little bit. And I really like this shed that he built. He used old locust posts that we had lying around forever, cemented them in. He, he's a good carpenter. Um, and then uh, I bought some rough cut lumber from a, an Amish fellow that I know. And I just basically went to the sawmill and said, I don't care what kind it is. I'll buy whatever you got. And so I, my 5x8 trailer loaded up, did this, and there's some lying around that I need to pick up. But it's a combination of pine, hemlock, and I forget what the other one was, some poplar and something else. So I think it's really neat that he built this for me. And I didn't tell him to do it, he just did it. Uh, so this is out here. And he had some leftover tin from when he built his He's always building cabins in the woods whenever he was young. Oh, I just got bit by a sweat bee. Sorry um, for the movement. They've spotted me. And uh, so I like this shed that he built for it. And what this is, is it's gravity flow. So right up there under those trees, I'll walk up there if I can find a path. I'm hoping I don't find a snake here. Thankfully, mostly we just have garter snakes and black snakes around here which are good to have. I would never kill one of them because they keep the rodent population down. But I'm going to walk up. It's gravity flow. I had a guy come with an excavator because I couldn't dig this by hand. And he dug this out for me. Here's the back of the watershed, we'll call it, and the roof. All right, I'm going to turn around here now. Just follow up the trail. So I had him dig it far enough down, it's up on a hill obviously, so that the slope would just feed it. Now you can see, this is, this is a really old spring house and it leaks like crazy, but there's still plenty of water in it. So he dug, dug up this, and let's get up to it up here now. I gotta watch because there was some poison ivy up here. So this is the spring house here. It was what fed, and I'll tell you, I wish it was still hooked up to the house, but that would be a big endeavor to do that. But it was gravity feed, nice spring water, and it went the whole way down. The house, you can kind of see it down there, the white thing there, the barns, the green roof. And it was the source of water for the farmhouse. Now I know that it hasn't been used in probably 25 years. I mean, I've been here almost 20 years, and people that had it before me had it for five years, and then it went through, then it was a family farm before that that was just passed down through the generations. So I know for sure it hasn't been used for close to 25 years. Um, I just checked it out, and there was water in it. Uh, and I thought, hey, if I could use that for the cows, that would be great because, you know, if you have a well, I hate to I hate to use too much well water, especially when it's dry, although we do have a good well, thankfully. But anyway, so I had them dig down to the bottom. We looked inside, found where the pipe was coming out, and that was in, that was in good shape, thankfully. So he, we dug, he dug down here. Um, we hooked up the... Uh, disconnected the old piping that went towards the house but it wasn't wasn't working anymore wasn't coming into the house and it's just too it's just a huge and expensive project to get that down to the house and we have a good well anyhow um, but he dug it down here we hooked it up down it's probably like about six feet down and then I had him dig it down to there there's the watershed and put that hydrant just high enough so that all I do is turn it on. I don't need any electricity. I don't need anything. And I've got water coming out. And it's one of those hydrants that will not freeze. They like, 
the, you can use them in the winter or whatever. Now I don't know that I'll use it with the hoses because then I have hoses going to the troughs uh, that are down in the in the cow pasture. But you know, I, I guess most people aren't going to have this type of setup here. But you never know. You could maybe do something like this. I don't think it would be that difficult if you had a source of water somewhere that was up on a hill to make some type of reservoir or spring house. And then, you know, you might come up with a different way to get the water, but I just thought that would be a good way that I would be able to get it without too much expense, that I'd be able to get that water and use it. And so I am extremely happy with it. We've been using it all spring and summer. And you can see the water was just coming out the overflow anyhow and going all over the place and it's it's good spring water now you might need to test the water if you're just doing it out of the blue and don't know the quality of it I would certainly test it before I give it to any animals but we knew this water was fine so I didn't pay the fees and test it but we've been using it all spring and summer I'm, I'm extremely happy with it and here's this is kind of my little mess I got to clean up because he did all the work and built this for me so I got to clean it up I've just been extremely busy this summer with many things and I haven't had the chance to do everything I want but that's that's the way it is all right so again one of these uh, I don't know what they call them frost free whatever uh, hydrants you just I shut it off at night I'm not going to shut it off now because I might have to fill it up later and it's kind of nice like I have a little trail here and I walk down I usually do this believe it or not I do it in my bare feet usually I walk up here in the morning and walk through the little stream that comes from the spring house we'll just walk right through it there's a couple boards there for people who aren't barefoot in it and I walk up turn it on and then sit down at the troughs and watch it fill up a lot easier than hauling it uh, we would haul it in five gallon buckets because I was afraid to have the hose on at the house because if you leave it if you forget about it you're going to drain your well and if you live in the country you know what that means so maybe you can come up with something like this on your farm or your place or whatever you have it's great this is this is probably the best thing I've done on the farm in a long time uh, saves a lot of labor saves water uh, and it uses something that's there it's not it's not the amount that I take out of here isn't affecting anything um, and I'm really happy with it and I'm really happy with this building that my son built for me you know I I'm not as, as good a builder as he is so he must have got it from somebody else down the line his uh, his great-grandfather was a builder so he's got it got it in him I guess uh, so a really nice building and I really like this this project and uh, if you can come up with something like this I am extremely happy with it and I'll tell you what it cost me was I I was surprised like I think I only paid about seven hundred dollars to have the plumber come out and dig that up and put this all in for me I think it was about seven hundred dollars he charged me and then the lumber you're not going to believe this everybody's talking about lumber all this lumber that I got cost me I think it was hundred and eighteen dollars at the Amish sawmill and the posts were here we had cut these ages ago and we had you never throw out a locust post they'll last forever and you can always find a use for them and and I think four bags of cement maybe a little bit more I don't know what he bought with that I think he said it cost him twenty dollars in cement because I didn't want him paying for it and uh, it's just pounded in here you can see the nails one went through here these were the nails they're like ribbed nails that they use on the barn siding and stuff so it's like a, like a little barn here he built pretty much and I really like it and again there it is the water system and I did buy food grade hose and you know what I found I won't name a store but I found like I could order this from a store a store that supplies farm items I won't say the name of it like I could order it online the food grade hose 
for about the same price that the stuff that they just had in the store, which wasn't food grade, they, but they are selling the other stuff because I think they probably make more profit on it. But you can go online before you buy your hose, go online, whatever store you buy from, and look and see if you can get food grade. Because, hey, I want my cows to have good water. I don't want them drinking some weird stuff out of a weird hose. So, uh, again, this is the, the water source that we use for our cows. And it's up on the hill, out in the field. And it's kind of neat, I think, that that old spring house has found a new use. And uh, I'm going on and on today, so I will stop here and I'll talk to you later.